Hello, in this video we're looking at section 4.3, which is on proportionality theorems. Um, and so we are looking at similar shapes again, um, but we're looking at some specific theorems that help us solve those problems a little bit differently than we have so far. Um, so the first one is if we have a line that is parallel to one side of a triangle and it intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. Um, basically what that means is if we have two triangles embedded in one another, and the sides, the bases are parallel to each other, then we have uh, similar triangles. And we looked at this in the last video, these are similar by angle angle, um, but we have a few more proportions that we can consider, and sometimes they'll make it a little bit easier for us to solve problems. Um, so for example, on this one, we can look at A and B, and we can say that those match up to C and D on the other side. So A over B we can make equal to C over D. And then A over E, so E is the length of that whole side, is going to be proportional to C over F. And then B over E, so that's the bottom part of this left, uh, the bottom of the left side, over E, the whole length of that side, is going to be proportional to D over F. So let's look at some examples. Um, basically, these make problems easier when we have a picture like number 1, because we know 33 and X on the left side and 27, over eight, 27 and 18 on the other side. And what we can do is we can actually just set up the proportion the way the picture looks. We can do 33 over X equals 27 over 18 like that and we can just cross multiply it so again the proportion is 33 over x is equal to 27 over 18 and when i cross multiply that 18 times 33 divided by 27 i end up with x equals 22. on the next one i know the bottom part of this is 4 and the whole thing is 14 so I can subtract to see that the top part is going to be equal to 10. And then I can set up a proportion like I did on the last one that looks like the picture. So I can do 10 over 4 will be equal to x over 6. And then I can cross multiply that. And I end up getting that x is equal to 15. On the next one, I know 12 and 4. But on this one, it'll actually be more helpful if I can find the length of this whole side, 16, because I know the length of this whole side, 20. So the 20 and the 16 match up with each other. The x and the 12 match up with each other. So I can say that x over 12 is equal to 20 over 16, and then I can cross multiply that. So 12 times 20 divided by 16 gives me that x equals 15. All right, so when we look at question number four, it is a little bit different, um, and that it's different because we have a variable on one of the parallel sides. So I want you to, out to the side, put a star, and I want you to write, if there's a number or variable on the parallel sides, we are going to redraw our two triangles. And this is how we worked these questions on the last set of notes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my top triangle and the sides that I have on there are six and X. And then the large triangle that I have, my sides are 20 across the bottom. And then this whole side on the left is 10. And because I have those parallel lines in the original picture, my corresponding angles are congruent on the left and my corresponding angles are congruent on the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark those angles on my new pictures that I'm drawing so I can see how my sides correspond to each other. So from here to set up my proportion, I'm just gonna pick one triangle to go on the top and one to go on the bottom and I, set, I can set up my proportion. So I can see that six corresponds to 10 and then I can see that X corresponds to 20. And then I can just go ahead and cross multiply from there. 
and that gives me that x equals 12. Um, if you try to work out these questions using a different proportion, I see this mistake all the time. Students will say that 6 over x equals 4 over 20, but that does not work because then you're comparing the left side of a triangle and the bottom of a triangle to part of a trapezoid and the bottom of a triangle. And so that relationship is not a valid one to use for a proportion. So then we have what's called a corollary, which basically means that it correlates to what we were just talking about, but it's not exactly the same. Um, and so when we have, I call these, they kind of look like a ladder, so they're kind of like ladder problems. Um, we'll set up the proportions for these just like we did on that um, first example, first and second one on the last section. So we can say that x over y will be equal to y over z. Um, and so these are pretty easy. When, the, when all three of these lines are parallel, a, b, and C, we can set up the proportion just the way our picture looks. So like on number 5, we can do 15 over 10 equals X over 14 and cross multiply. So I'll do 15 times 14 and divide that by 10 to get that my X is equal to 21. On the next one, it says that AB is 50. So that's all of this is 50. And then we are looking for X. Um, so because we're given the parallel lines that we have over here, we can set up a proportion. We know that x matches up to 8, and then we can see that 50 is going to match up to the sum of the other sides. So if I add 8 and 10 and 12, I get 30. So then the proportion I could do would be 8 over x, to do the circled parts together, would be equal to 30 over 50. And then I'll cross multiply, I'll do 8 times 50 and divide by 30 to get that my final answer for x is 13.3 repeating, which is 40 divided by 40 divided by 3. And then our last problem type for our notes today is about an angle bisector theorem. Um, it says if a ray or a segment bisects an angle of a triangle, then it divides opposite sides of the triangle into segments proportional to the other two sides of the triangle which sounds confusing, but basically, um, if we have an angle bisector here at the top, so these two angles are equal to each other, I'm gonna put x, y, z, and w on my triangle. If we have an angle bisector like that, then we can say that x over z is equal to y over w. So I'm gonna put that in my conclude section, that x over z equals y over w. So then if we look at example one, or I guess it's example seven, not one. <laughs> if we look at example seven, we see that we have an angle bisector here at the top. So that means that I can do these two parts in a fraction equal these two parts in a fraction. So, so far I have x over something equals 27 over 18. So to figure out that something, I say since the whole side here is 42, I subtract 18 from that. And I end up seeing that this part of the triangle is 24. So that will go on the other part of my proportion that I don't have filled in yet. And so that means I can do 24 times 27 and divide by 18 to get that x is equal to 36. On the next one, uh, my angle bisector that I have is here. So I'm going to do my proportion this way, 6x over 5x. It's like they've got the picture turned to the side, but that's okay. Equals 10x minus 4 over 7x. So let me write that out. 6x over 5x equals 10x minus 4 over 7x. Now on a problem like this, before we cross multiply, since I have x's in both parts of my fraction on the left, I can reduce those x's out, but I cannot do the same thing on the right side because I have this minus 4. Um, so in the event that you have 6x divided by 5x or something like that where you have just a number with x on the top and bottom of your fraction, you can reduce it like that when we're cross-multiplying. Um, technically, those x's will give us an extraneous solution of x equals 0, but we're not going to worry about that for now. For now, we're just going to cross it out, and you can talk about that later when you get to Algebra 2. So, <laughs> when we cross-multiply this, now I'm doing 6 times 7x, which gives me 42x. And I'm going to set that equal to 
5 times 10x minus 4, which gives me 50x minus 20. Uh, I'm going to subtract that 50x from both sides, so I get that negative 8x equals negative 20. And then I divide both sides by 8 to get that x equals 2.5. And then on the last one, when I go to set up my proportion, I have something over 20 will be equal to x over 10. And on this one, I have to do a little bit more work to figure out what the, this part of the segment is. Um, so since the whole segment is 15, and I know that the right side of that segment is x, that means that the left side of that segment is going to be 15 minus x. So that when I add the two parts together, it would equal 15. So I have 15 minus x here. Um, and so I'm going to put a note over here that we always do big minus small or whole minus part. That's where that 15 minus x came from. And then I can cross multiply that. So when I cross multiply going this way, I get um, 150 minus 10x. And when I cross multiply going the other direction, I get 20x. I'll add 10x to both sides. And then I divide both sides by 30 to get that x will equal 5. 